You are listening to XFM 104.9 in London. Today sees the release of Lipstick Traitors, A Secret History of the Manic Street Preachers. Brilliant double album of uh, cover versions, b-sides and unreleased rarities. And now uh, providing a soundtrack to our lives for the last ten years, really believe it, it's not making you feel old, uh, by bestowing upon us seven albums. The Manics refuse to compromise their emotions and social commentary. They've covered every topic you care to mention, including Motown, Hillsborough, the British Welfare System, Australia and Sean Moore's finest moment, Kevin Carter. Fresh from an appearance at uh, Glass Remove and Witness Festivals this weekend, please welcome an old friend of XFM, Mr. JC. Howdy. How are you? I'm fine. How was, you, how was your weekend? I was going to say you must be knackered. It was good. Uh, we did a uh, Move Festival in Manchester, which is yeah. cool. But then we just came back from Witness in Dublin yesterday, which was. It was a bunch of, uh, well, it was about 16,000 16, Irish jumping beans. It was cool. It was really, it was an added bonus for our last gig. Because our kind of last proper gigs always turn out to be like the last day of school, really depressing kind of thing. <laughs> so it was brilliant. Yes, it was mega. Well, you ended on a high yesterday. We did. Now, when you say last gig, there's loads of people going to be going, what? You mean last gig for a while? Yeah, no, last gig for a while, yeah, because we, um, we've got this install thing tonight. Right. Um, but, uh, we're just going to write songs this year and just try and do a new album because I'm getting sick of singing some of the old ones. The really. same old yeah. songs. Well, I've been singing some like Motorcycle Emptiness for like nearly 12 years now, so. That's a long That's time. a long time. I don't think anyone ever gets tired of it though, I have to say. No, oh, I'll get your tongue out of his bum. Anyway, um, we've got loads, <laughs> of, loads of questions. Um, Alice says, Nikki is quoted as saying, we want to change things, get a new producer, record some when you going to Morocco had such a beneficial effect on Blur, they made a fantastic album. So where are you guys going to go to record your next album? Um, well, we're not going to go to Morocco because Wyatt's got a bit of a delicate stomach. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't be doing that. But um, I think we'd be going to New York, I think. Right. Which kind of like Nick has got this theory, you know, he likes that kind of old romantic notion of getting a bit of psychosis before you record. <laughs> and he doesn't really like New, like New York, so it's so like it's like method recording. Just why do <laughs> But it's going to like send me mad because I was there a couple of days ago right. <clears throat> meeting a producer and stuff and like, you know, there's no smoking in, in any bars I in know, New York. it's just horrendous now, isn't it? So before, gonna... before you could at least huddle into a corner of a bar and it was quite, it's quite sociable, you know, that you're standing there face to face with someone else, you get to Chat, well, I don't care if they just give you a little kind of plastic lepers box you can smoke in. I know. You know, that's fine. But kind of like, you know, I, I'm going to have psychosis and I'm there because it's going to send me mental. Oh, Lord. Well, good luck with it. You've already lost no. a week. No, then you'll have to go somewhere else. Right, I've got a million and one questions for you. So you're going to fire through. If there's any ones that you can't be bothered to, because you're a bit knackered, you can't be bothered to answer, just say pass and I'll move on to the next one, all right? Okay. Penny says, what's the most shameful record you ever bought? Um. Mm. Uh, well, the first one I bought, the very first single I ever bought was kind of shameful in terms of what people would expect, Yeah, you know, a young punk rocker to buy. Um, it's My Old Piano by Diana Ross. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'm quite surprised by that. Paul says, bands you reckon are overrated and underrated, particularly at the moment? No, I'm trying no. to be likeable at the yeah. moment. Yes, okay, that's fair enough. Caroline says, where is your heaven and where is your hell? Eh, uh, I think my heaven... My heaven's in front of the TV on a Sunday watching lots of sport. Right, okay. Um, Which uh, sports in particular? Um, top five, it'd have to be rugby first, boxing second, athletics first, Formula One fourth, football fifth. <laughs> I like the audience in this. Cricket <laughs> six, if I'm going to carry on. And so where is your hell? Um, hell is recording an album in New York City where you can smoke <laughs> anywhere except the You're street. I felt to go into that. Okay, Alice says, what is your favourite scary movie? Um... There's a kind of like a, a TV movie called Salem's Lot. Uh, when I was young, David mm -hmm. Soul and James Mason. That's because um, me and sh myself and Sean <coughs> live living in the same house when we were young. And uh, we watched that and they had that floating kid in front of the window. It's <laughs> Michael, Michael. So every night we close the curtains after that. And just like it just scared the bejesus out of us. That's oh. the scariest thing I've ever watched when I was oh. a kid. And this, I, I could never watch it again either. Oh. I couldn't. I couldn't watch Starsky and Hutch after that because it was just <laughs> because of David Soul. Yeah. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, right, Ka sorry, all Starsky and Hutch fans. Uh, Caroline says she once heard a long time ago that you're considering a career as an actor. Do you still have any desires in that direction? And if so, which movie or TV role would you like or would like to have played? Um. I think when I was young, because like, I was just, when I was about 15, 14, I was really getting into Clash and stuff. Mm -hmm. And somehow I saw Tim Roth as being like the kind of, um, 
the kind of like the actual equivalent of the clash kind of thing because mm -hmm. everything you appeared in was quite political like meantime yeah king of the ghetto made in britain i like so it's kind of like the same thing for me like you know tim roth the clash it was the same right. thing and uh kind of like you know i just uh, i remember just getting a skinhead after seeing like right. you know tim roth in like the king of the ghetto and stuff so, so i kind of like acted out a, acted out a couple of tim roth lines right. in there so in there's the, anyone the out there then who's considering tim roth for a role yeah. should they give you a call no no <laughs> no I got a level in drama. Oh, all oh, right, yeah. There's something, uh, Robert Perez. Well, I imagine it's not the real Robert Perez. Says uh, the intro to your live show featured an instrumental extract from Bowie's Low album, Excellent Choice. Which band would you wish to use an extract of the Mannix music as an intro to their live show? <laughs> oh Jesus! These do take a lot of thinking. These questions. Public okay. Enemy. Public Enemy. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, and uh, this is your final question before you play a song, and I've got loads more for you later. You're not off the hook yet. Claire says, "Do you like chocolate-covered pretzels?" I don't like sweet stuff. Okay. I'm very much a savoury person. I'm glad we got that out of the way. Right, what are you going to play for us first today, Jane? And I'm going to play the lost single, "Forever Delayed." Excellent. Jane Seen Bradfield live on XFM for you people. <laughs> James Dean Bradfield is with us today. Uh, Lipstick Traces is released today. It uh, says here, A Secret History of Manic Street Preachers. Rather marvellous. Uh, and they're doing a little performance at uh, HMV tonight at XSUB. You can't get in without a little wristband pass. And uh, we've chosen four people who uh, asked us questions, but we're not going to say who they are on the air, because you know what you lot are like. You cheat, and you try and get in, and the rest of it. So they know who they are. Anyway, uh, James, uh, a few more daft questions for you Hi. before you go. Uh, right. If you were to judge yourself, hey, hey, says Hayley and 
Croydon. What would you consider to be your best achievement and the worst thing you've done in your lifetime? Uh, I would say kind of like, um, tolerate this. Mm -hmm. Tolerate this is definitely the best thing we've done. And the Holy Bible. Those two things were encapsulated everything we wanted to do. Right. The worst thing we've ever done is a B-side called Patrick Bateman. Right, okay. Which is kind of based on the, the okay. American psycho character. Um, mm -hmm. so Manic Street Features fans in uh, the studio, Sharon, Nick, Ben, Hugh, would you agree with that there? Yeah. 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 I think it's a small struck. Uh, right. Um, we have a question here from James to James. It says, if you were stuck in a room with Bush and Blair, who would you punch first? <laughs> mm, well, I, I'd go for I'd go for Bush, I suppose. You'd go for Bush, right. <laughs> Nothing to do with size or anything like that. Uh, Tamuri says, what's your favourite PlayStation game? Don't like PlayStation. Don't like PlayStation. No, hey, I like hey. TV. I hate Keep it. Keep PlayStations off TV. Yes. <laughs> Kerry says, uh, has the fact that Nikki's been playing without his feather boa mic stand uh, meant to change the direction for the manics? Actually, like, loads of people saying, why is Nikki playing without his feather boa mi mic stand? Well, I kind of like, um, every time he comes to London, Nick gets like his kind of rash on his neck. Right. Um, so he thought it was a kind of London allergy. Uh -huh. But then he kind of got that rash on his neck when he was out of London. <laughs> so he decided it was a feather boa allergy. So Hence, there. Oh dear. Right, okay, and this is your final question, and then we're going to let you go. Well, we're going to let you perform first before we let you go. Uh, this comes from TC, who says, your move gig was fantastic. How do you feel about Coventry City, she thinks, in brackets, adopting uh, Tolerate This as their pre-match song? <laughs> As a sports fan? Oh god. Um, not much really. I'd, I'd rather kind of Nottingham Forest adopt it, obviously. Cause I'm a Forest fan. Right. I didn't know that. Thanks for telling me. Well, there, I'll get the lawyers under that. Let's check this out though, because she does say I think in brackets. So, you know, we're not sure there. Right, if any okay. country, if, uh, City fans are listening, uh, let us know if that is true. Right, what are you going to play for us uh, before we let you go off to HMV today? It's a song we used to play when we were young. Uh, it's a cover of a band uh, called Count Van Beethoven, and then it's called Take the Skinheads Bowling. Chasing Bradfield Live on XFM. Thanks. <laughs> by exactly one Everybody's coming home for lunch these days Last night there were skinheads on my lawn Take the skinheads bowling, take them bowling Take the skinheads bowling, take them big lanes A lot of people say the bowling alleys all look the same It's not a line you that goes you that rhymes with anything Last night I had a dream but I forget what it was Take the skinheads bowling, take the Plastic. Had a dream last night. I want to lick your knees. Had a dream last night. It was about nothing. Take the skin heads bowling. Take them bowling. Take the skin heads bowling. Take them. Take the skin as well. It does feature on lipstick traces, uh, which is out today. Uh, good luck tonight at HMV, James. Thank good you very enough much. to uh, the rest of the band, and we look forward to hearing the new stuff. And uh, good luck in New York. Oh, <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you.